Hello, hello, hello. How are you guys doing this evening? I'm getting a little bit uh, later start to vlogging than I thought that I would because my neighbor from across the street on the corner came over and talked to me. Um, we ended up talking for like an hour. It is 5.38 p.m. And uh, we got home from brunch. Oh, let's see. I'm gonna light a candle out here. I just, last night, I went through my pumpkin one, my last pump, I think it's my last pumpkin one. So I have this, I got these at Trader Joe's. This is the apple crisp, the honey, honey crisp apple. So I'm gonna have this candle out here. And I'm sitting in this chair, because although it doesn't seem like that, this chair over here, it's like, and, and it's very dark over here. So, um, anyway, it doesn't matter. But, uh, so I, um, have the light on inside and I have the light on outside and so when it starts getting dark if I'm still vlogging. Now I think this will probably be a short vlog today, probably like 20 minutes. Watch it'll end up being like an hour and 20 minutes or something. Although I don't really feel that today. So um, I don't know. I have two coffees out here. I have the coffee from Cafe Patashu. It's banana nut and it's delicious. But I've had it for a while. I have all these candles out here. I keep on moving them around. I'm gonna light the uh, blueberry pumpkin patch one too. So, um, I always like scrape off the edge of the candle and then like throw it out. Um, oh, what is going on here? Oh, I think I might have, have to dig out the wick now. Or not. Oh no, it went perfect. Um, and then I'm not gonna, I'm not going to, uh, light the woodwick candle, which look, I've gone through so much. Cause it'll, you know, crackle and then that'll be in the background of the, uh, the video. But anyway, I have the banana nut from Cafe Patashu because we went to brunch today. And then I just made a cup in my Christmas Cardinals cup. They're flying around and playing in the snow. Um, I just made a cup of the Barney's White Christmas, Santa's White Christmas or whatever it's called. I don't know. But I love it. Today has been a really good day. Um, I filmed a video late last night on for my drama channel, which I'll talk about here in a second. So I didn't um, have a have to film anything today other than this vlog. And I actually was not going to film a vlog today. I was going to take the whole day off. But Alex is upstairs in bed resting. So I was like, I'm going to film for a little bit. And then I'm going to go upstairs and rest too. I'm like seeing like the, the steam from the cup going over into the camera. But I think that kind of adds to the ambience of the camera. So we, okay, so after brunch, Alex took me to go get Diet Cokes. I got the 15 case of Diet Cokes because I was out of them. And then I've been loving Diet Coke lately. I went through this whole phase where I was like not drinking soda. Do you remember that? And now I'm like obsessed with the Diet Cokes again. <laughs> I had a cheer wine last night. I think I'm kind of over the cheer wine. I think the cheer wine is more of a summer thing. So um, went to the gas station. I got like a 15 pack of Diet Coke. And then I asked Alex if he wanted Cokes. And he was like, yeah, I don't have, I said, you like, don't have any Cokes left. He had one. I looked in the refrigerator when I was putting my Diet Cokes in there. And um, I was like, do you not want to eat Cokes? And he goes, I'll take some Cokes. <laughs> so he, um, so I got him a 15 pack of Cokes as well. And then we came home. And when we came home, I took all my stuff inside, but my neighbor was outside talking to her friend that's also a master gardener in our neighborhood. They were the ones that like weeded out. Um, my neighbor keeps on telling me that I need to weed the walkway. It's not horrible, but it's like, it needs to be, I'll show you. It's like, you can see it's not horrible, but I need to like pull these sticky weeds and rake the leaves out of there so that when it starts snowing, it'll be pretty through there. So anyway, she, we're talking today about how she's going to help me move these hostas and space them out. So that there's four on either side for next year. So we're going to do that next year. Um, and cut them back and stuff like that is what, she was telling me that we're gonna do. She and her friend were talking about how to do it. Um, I wanted to get bushes out here for a long time, but I don't think I wanna do that anymore. I think I wanna, the, the hostas are so pretty in the summer that I think that I just wanna make them like even, like two, 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 and two, and then just have the flowers and stuff on the front porch. I think that'll be a prettier look. And then just get like really, really dark mulch, like that black mulch. And then with the really green hostas, I think that will look so pretty, up, you know, along here. Because it'll be the same size hostas all the way down and then have flowers on the front porch. And you think it's a pretty look? I think so. Um, and it's completely a little bit more affordable than having a bunch of hedges and bushes put in here. So anyway, 
was I saying? So I made a video last night. So I wasn't gonna vlog, and then I came home, and I said to Alex, I said, well, what are you gonna do? And he goes, well, I'm gonna go lay down in bed. And I go, are you going to bed? He slept last night through the night, through the entire night he slept. And I was like, are you gonna go to sleep for the night again? He goes, I don't know, I might. Um, so we were gonna like pick out a TV show and start watching it together. So, and we also have the Kardashians to catch up on. <clears throat> but if he sleeps through the night, he sleeps through the night. Cause I told him, I said, well, I'm thinking I'm gonna vlog if you're gonna rest for a little bit. And then after I get done vlogging, I'm gonna lay down for like an hour and a half, two hours, as I rarely ever do on Sundays. Unless I do late at night, cause I try to film, you know, a lot on Sundays. But I think on Sundays from now on, I'm gonna try to like pre-film a video on Saturday night for my drama channel. And then on Sundays, just vlog. Um, and just do those two videos or not vlog at all and just take off the whole day on Sunday. I think it's going to be my plan going forward so I can kind of just enjoy Sundays. I have to tell you what's so interesting though is that when I mentioned over here something about like not being sure when people are watching my videos and like asking you guys like what days you watch them and stuff like that, there were so many people that said that you watch videos more during the weekend than the week. And we were like, if you're gonna take a day off, don't do it on the weekends, because I always catch up on the vlogs on the weekend, I always catch up on videos on the weekend, like that's when I like to watch videos. And so I was like, well, if people like to watch videos on the weekends, then that's probably when I should film more, you know? So, or the other thing I could do is I could pre-film videos like on a Tuesday for Saturday or Sunday and then take one of those days off. So I may do that as well. Um, it's not hard for me to pre-film like a Peter Does Stuff video or a Peterisms video or a review video to have up on a Saturday or Sunday. So that might be the other thing that I try to do is like, and, and to just add one more video, you know, to each day so that by Saturday I have seven videos to post or Sunday I have seven videos to post, you know, except for my vlog and then not vlog that day or whatever so that I can take a day or two off. I think that would probably be really good for like my mental health and just relaxing on the weekends and stuff like that. So yeah, so um, yeah. So that's kind of my plan going forward. We'll see how that works this week. <laughs> my plans never necessarily go the way that I want them to go. So anyway, um, so he slept all through last night. So I don't know what we're going to do tonight. But when we got home, I noticed that my neighbor was talking to her friend across the street. And so my neighbor across the street was talking to her friend that lives down the street. So they are like gardeners together and they're on the landscaping committee and stuff. And so, and her friend is so nice. Like I said, they were the two that like cleaned out when I had the pancreatitis that cleaned out our whole walkway and stuff, which was really, really sweet. So I um, put all my stuff inside. Alex took Boo out back and fed him and then brought him inside and fed him. And then um, I ordered all this food on Amazon for Boo because like we figured out like a new food that he likes. I think it's just, it's not Royal Canine. It's the Blue brand. But it's the one that comes in like the little, the dishes, like the little cups. And it's like the stew. But then you have to kind of like cut it up for him into like little areas, little pieces. But this is the thing that's so weird. Boo doesn't like anything beef flavored or fish flavored. He like only likes the chicken flavored stuff. Like only the chicken flavored treats, only the chicken flavored food. He won't touch it if it's beef or anything else. That's so funny. So anyway, so I got online and I ordered all this food. Um, and the first thing that I ordered was beef. I was like, I swear I got the chicken. So today the chicken came. I was really happy about that. And then I ordered a bunch of, I'm really into the degree. This is so funny because I hated spray deodorants for years and I always use um, Old Spice. But I had bought this deodorant for my pool bag and it was like the degree 72 hour one. And um, it was like the basic one at first, I think. And so I got that and I loved using it at the pool. And I also felt like it worked really well. The only thing is, like, I never get a rash from it or anything red, but sometimes, like, my, like, it itches a little bit when I use it, but not always. So Degree has these 72-hour, they have them for women, they have them for men, like, they're probably all of them unisex kind of things, but um, they have the diff these different scents, and I, like, the last one I used was, like, coconut something, and I loved it. But it's kind of more of like a summery spring scent. And so I got online and I looked and I ordered, I don't even remember what they were, but I ordered two new scents because I wanted to try something different too. Alex loves them too. Like I, we can both completely switched from like uh, deodorant bars to uh, the spray deodorant, the Degree 72 hours. I'm telling you guys, this is obviously not sponsored. I wish I had sponsorship from Degree, but I totally swear by it. So I got that stuff. Um, 
and then I was opening those boxes, and then I'm in Boo Radley's food, um, and then, oh, no, 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 that stuff came later, because I was talking to my neighbor when that stuff came. I was opening some stuff in the kitchen, and then I put my stuff away, put my bag away, put the Diet Coke, so all that, well, I put the Diet Cokes in the fridge just now, but before I came out here, but I was putting them in the kitchen, putting Alex's Cokes in the kitchen, all that kind of stuff, and whatever, and I was getting ready to vlog, so I brought all my stuff out here to vlog, and then I was like, I'm gonna go talk to my neighbor for a couple seconds, so I went over there and talked to her, then my neighbor next door came home, we were saying hi to him, I was talking to them about what I was gonna do with my yard, cozy mysteries, we're talking about Christmas cozy mysteries, we were talking about, and she was like, no, she was like, you've gotta leave your stuff up for Thanksgiving, because I was like, I, it, I have to tell you, like, walking up, it looks so pretty on my front porch, like, it is, like, unbelievable pretty, right? And so, I'm like, well, I don't know, like, if I'm gonna, you know, keep this stuff up, because this is kind of how I feel. Like, I bought this stuff, these mums. Like, these mums are still, like, ginormous, you guys, look. I bought the, and the, here I have the pumpkins and everything. I bought these mums, and they were, exp these mums were expensive. And, um, my neighbor even in the corner was even saying that it was, like, really hard to find good mums this year. And I said, well, I found them at that flower market up the street that I love, that 10th place. I said, but they were expensive. I said, Caroline found hers at Sullivan's for $4.99, but I saw them the other night at her house. They did not look good. They looked small, and they were kind of, I don't know, like, not shaped pretty. And I said, but here's the thing. Like, I bought them, and then they're up for three weeks, and then I get rid of them and the pumpkins, and I've spent $100 on all this kind of stuff. Like, to me, I don't want to just waste that stuff. And I said, but here's the other thing. Like, if I don't start putting the Christmas stuff up now, then it's, like, even a shorter time than I get to use the Christmas stuff. So, I don't know what to do. Um, I'll probably put the Christmas stuff up when the next time I go to Costco and they have the Christmas stuff up, because that's usually where I get my Christmas stuff from. I don't know that I'm going to go all out. <clears throat> I already, in the basement, I have a whole section where I keep all the Christmas stuff, like the pillow covers. I have to get a wreath. Um, and the pillow covers and the lanterns and all that kind of stuff. So, I'm going to do that again this year. And bring all that stuff out here and I'll probably get like two things. I'm not gonna go all I mean, the last couple years I've like literally gone all out for like summer, you know, fall, whatever. And this year I just got the two mums and the pumpkins. I really like it looks like a, it's a very simple look when you like walk up our porch and I love it. So I don't know that I am going to do a ton for Christmas. I think I probably will go overboard for summer though. I was showing my neighbor in the corner of my countdown to summer. So I came home, I was talking to them. We were having a good talk, talking about Christmas Cozy Mysteries. We are talking about the Cozy because she's like helping me with ideas for my Cozy Mystery that I'm writing, the HOA series. And so we were talking about that. And because she's going to be a character in my book. <laughs> so she has all these things in her garden. If you've watched my uh, tour of her garden thing, I think I might have even said this in a video. She has um, all these things that are like mushrooms. Like, um, like, you know, like the things that are like, how do you explain it? Like the sticks that have like the, the ceramic things with the glass things on them. And she's got like, you know, turtles and ducks and all that kind of stuff. But she's a lot of these mushroom things too, right? So I said, I'm going to turn you into this character that's like this master gardener. And that, you know, like you live in this like older neighborhood. And everybody thinks like you're the sweetest person. You're this great gardener. But everybody knows that behind the scenes you're like selling psychedelic mushrooms to all the neighbors. <laughs> <laughs> and she thinks it's hilarious, right? So, um, so yeah, that's her character. So anyway, so I have really pretty much the entire first book, like all like ideaed out. I just have to like write it into an outline form. Most of the outline is done, and then I have to like go in and do some of the characters. And then like I've been starting writing the book a little bit, and then so I think like once I get it started, my plan is to start it in January, like writing, writing the book, and then I think by like probably March or April, the book will probably be done. And then I have to figure out how to edit it. And I'm going to publish it myself. I'm going to publish it myself on Amazon or create one of those things where you do, like, create space. And then I think it's, like, I know this probably sounds, like, expensive to a lot of people. But ultimately, when you, like, the proceeds that people take when you, like, publish a book, it's not. I think it's, like, $500 and you own the entire rights to your book. And then it can be sold on Amazon. And it's, like, order to sell kind of thing. So they only make as many as are ordered. Um, a lot of cozy mysteries are sold this way. I, I, and I'm not going to go the route of traditional publishing because I just want to kind of see how this goes for me first, the cozy mystery thing. So I'm not going to like bust my butt to like, I just, it's, I want to do, I want to do it the way that I want to do it. 
I've got an idea of like a theme to titles because I love when cozy mysteries have like a theme. Like, so the, this Christmas uh, series that I started for this month, the first one is got Rusty Murder Gentleman, and like every book in the series is like a uh, murder mystery, cozy mystery theme off of a Christmas song. I love that kind of thing. I know it's kind of like corny, but I love it. And, like, when you look at all the cozy mysteries, they all kind of, like, the fortune books, for, Miss Fortune books, they all have kind of the same theme of the cover. It's like the James Patterson books, right? And I love that. I think it's smart, and I love it. And so I have an idea of how I want my book covers to look, and I have an idea for the, the titles. And, um... And the HOA is not going to be in the title of the books. The titles are going to all be, like, themed, and then it's going to be underneath it, the HOA series. And so... The Homeowners Association series. So that is going to... I think I'm going to start working on that in January and then have it done by, like, March or April and then start the editing process, which will probably be, like, May, June. And then during all of that, I'll be, like, the title and the cover, have the cover designed and things like that. Obviously, I'm not going to do the design cover. I actually know somebody that I'm going to reach out to to do the design cover. So that will be by, like, June. So I'm hoping, if everything goes, fingers crossed the way that I want it to, fingers crossed that by July, August, my first book will come out. But I'm also thinking that if I kind of want to make my first one um, a Halloween book, and so, because I, when I look up Cozy Mystery Series, I look to see if the first one's like a Christmas book or a Halloween book. So I'm thinking about maybe releasing it like in September and having the first release be a Halloween book in the series. And the second book would be like a Christmas book and then on and on and on. And I, hopefully my plan would be going forward, once I have it kind of figured out what to do, that I would release two to three books a year in the series if people like it. And then also come up with other series as well. I have other ideas for other cozy mystery series. So this is the next era of my life. I'm not quitting YouTube. I love YouTube, obviously. This is something I'm going to be doing on the side. Um, but I love reading cozy mysteries. I don't feel like in the plan that I have that I have to dedicate maybe more than two to three hours a day writing and editing to be able to put out two to three books a year, um, which is what I like when I read a cozy mystery series that there's that many books put out in a year. And what I may do is I may put out, to begin with, like two to three books for the first series, then start the second series, and then after that, attempt to put out one book from each series a year or two. Um, and then once I get like four to six books in, this is my long-term plan. And then when I, once I get four to six books in, hopefully, if anybody wants to read them, then I would start like my third series. I have like two, I have like a bunch of ideas for different series for Cozy Mysteries, not just HOA series. I have a bunch of them. I have another one that takes place in a small town in Michigan around a lighthouse. Um, and that's like a mother and a son, high, her high school uh, son, teenage son that moved there after their, uh, her husband and his father dies um, from like an allergy that he has. And so like this, he and the son are hiking and then they have to move back. She has to move back home because she can't afford. It's this whole like insurance policy thing. And then so she can't afford to support them anymore. And they live in Colorado. So she has to move back home to Michigan. I don't know if I've ever talked about this one before, but I have a lot of that, like, noted and outlined as well. And her sister's like... I, so whenever you read these these books, the police chief is always who the woman falls in love with, but this time I'm going to make the police chief her sister. And her parents own um, an Airbnb thing, and it's like Cozy Cottage Airbnb. And so they have one that's in a lighthouse. And so she and her son move into this lighthouse. And then it has something to do with this, like, he falls in love with this girl and she's not who she thinks she is. And then somebody ends up dead and then he's implicated in it. And it's like her having to solve the murder so that her 18 year old son doesn't go to prison and all this kind of stuff because she knows he doesn't do it. And that's like the first book in that series. See, I have a, I th think a lot about these kinds of things. <clears throat> and then I have one that I want to do that takes place in another one that takes place in Indiana, but it's more like Southern Indiana, small town, you know, cobblestone streets, things like that. Like very like old school cozy mystery, like murder she wrote kind of thing. So yeah, so, which I haven't read any of the murder she wrote books. I think I had one way back in the day, but that's kind of my idea. I just, the other night started making my list of goals for 2024 and that was like, well, getting to a certain weight was one of them. I think my weight was 180 that I want to get to, 180 that I want to get to. And then my second goal was like 
I think I read these on here. It was like completely outlined, and then the second one was like finisher, first cozy mystery novel in that series, the HOA series. So, um, I've been pretty good about accomplishing my goals in 2023, and a lot of my cleaning goals I'm getting done. Um, I was just talking to Alex today about some of the things I want to start doing for the month of November that I want to get done. I've gotten a lot of the cleaning stuff done so far, so yeah. So yeah, so Alex slept through the entire night last night. I think he slept like 15 hours. <laughs> so I was actually, I went to bed and I like laid down with he and Boo and I was like, I can't, couldn't sleep and I wanted to make this video and I was like, just sit, go down there and make the video now. So I did. And um, that's such a nice car for making such kind of weird noises. I hope there's not anything wrong with that car. I hope it's okay. Did you hear that? Like when it started up? It's like a nice like black SUV. I don't know, I think it's like a Lincoln or a Cadillac. That's not a Cadillac, I think it's a Lincoln. It looked brand new, it was like spotlessly clean. Um, so I made the video, and then while the video was uploading, because I wanted to watch it back before I scheduled it to post today, which I, yeah, so it, like I had it scheduled to post to go up at 2.30, and while I was it was rendering and uploading, I watched The Golden Bachelor, and then after that, what did I do? Watch Love After Lockup. I don't think I made it all the way through. I watched somebody else's video on YouTube. Some of that, like, it was like a recovery video on YouTube. Um, this person had, like, covered some, one of my recovery videos. I've done a couple of them now. And so, like, I was, like, watching this, this like, stream of them which was nice that they covered that video of mine. And um, and then I watched something else. What did I watch last night? I watched some other reality show. The Garden. I have so many fun shows that are not fun, but like, well, fun, but I have good shows that are coming on tonight. Who is texting me? Who is this? Oh my God, I got so many people texting me. I'm a sponsor. She's out of town. She's just checking on me. We're now in this um, Paredes. That's Alex's family family group chat. And it's like myself and Alex, Fufu and Jesse, Carlos and Liliana, and Alex's mom. And it's constant. <laughs> I thought the one that we had, that is Caroline and her husband Mike, her son and his girlfriend, her two stepsons and her one stepson's wife, did I say Alex and I? Alex and I are in that too. And then Alex's mom is in that as well. I thought that one was bad. I mean, this one is like, I mean, it's constant. And now Alex, because I said to him, I go, are people going to be like, I don't love being parts of group chats. Like, I, if, Al if I said that to Alex, Alex would say, well, then just get out of it if you don't want to be in it. <laughs> but I want to be in it. I just don't want to be texted, you know, every two minutes, right? And so... Like, somebody, like, at 6 o'clock in the morning is always texting, like, good morning, everyone. I'm like, we don't need to be doing this. <laughs> like, this is too much, right? And so, now Alex is, like, sending everybody TikToks in this group chat. I'm like, what, what's, why are you, what's the need? And they're all, like, these Venezuelan people dancing to these Venezuelan songs that he knew as, like, a kid and stuff like that. So, anyway. Um, oh, Potomac starts tonight, too. Well, I haven't watched any of that, so I'll probably catch up on that. Some, well, not catch up on the show, but watch that show sometime this week. Because I am going to start watching Potomac. Okay. So, tonight is Big Brother. Excited about that. Still haven't watched Welcome to Plathville this week. I'm kind of over that show. Last night, started watching Love After Lockup. I guess I didn't finish it. Um, Alex and I have the Kardashians to watch. I don't know if we have last week or we have just this week. Um, and then 90 Day Fiance comes out tonight. I have last week's episode to watch too, so I have two of those episodes. And then The Garden comes out tonight, and then I also want to watch Love Island Games. I have like six shows to watch. What did I watch last night? I watched The Golden Bachelor. Oh, I finished watching Mid Brother from Tuesday. What else did I watch last night? I feel like I watched them something random. I don't know. But anyway, um, 
Oh, I spent a lot of time looking up Christmas cozy mysteries. I told my neighbor across the street today, I said, so I'm reading this book for Peter's Book Club that's bored to death, which people were saying to me that they like only got one star. I'm like, I think I said this the other day in my video. Like I like, sometimes I will, a book will get one star and I love it. Sometimes it'll get five stars and I hate it. So I'll probably end up not liking it, but I hope I do. But after this one, cause it's not Christmas themed, like literally, I said this last night, didn't I? <clears throat> I don't know if I'm gonna read the Britney Spears memoir, but there's a couple other books, the true crime book um, <clears throat> for October. But once I get those out, I am, it's all cozy Christmas cozy mysteries for me. So I was looking at all these different series of Christmas cozy mysteries, new Christmas books that are coming out. I have them pulled up in my computer inside so that I can order them on Audible. I'm really, really excited about them. I'm getting ready to start the orange, um, what's that called? I can never remember what that's called. Not, it's not, I mean, it's a graphic novel, but what's it called? Um, it's a word that starts with, it starts with an M. Not anime. But you know what I'm talking about. But anyway, it's like a Japanese story, and it's um, the ones that are told from the back to the front. Why can't I think of what the word is? It's like on the tip of my tongue. It's been sitting on my kitchen counter forever. But years ago, I started it, and I never finished it. And so I just finished that Heartstopper one. The next Heartstopper, I think it's the last one, doesn't come out until... December or January and I love graphic novels just to like lay around the house and read them for like an hour I love I mean that's like something that I started like reading in the last couple years that I really loved so so many there's three books I think in the orange what's the word I'm looking for it starts with an M why can't I think of what it is but anyway I know somebody's in the comment section saying that so thank you <laughs> it's on, literally on the tip of my tongue but anyway um <sighs> Don't you hate that when you can't think of what you're trying to say? So anyway, a couple years ago, these books got kind of famous. These orange books, they're really thick. They're like that thick each. And um, I'm like in my head searching for this word. It doesn't matter. So anyway, um, I'm gonna start reading those because I heard that they were really good. And then I don't know, um, that I'm also still reading that physical copy book of A Literal Mess. I never finish that. It's literally less than 200 pages, so I've got to make an effort to finish those. And then I'm going to start, after I get this bored to death book, start reading The Christmas Cozy Mysteries, uh, the one that I am reading for Peter's Book Club this month. I'm going to start that series. And then I also want to read this month the Jacqueline Frost Christmas Tree Farm um murder or cozy mystery murders whatever they're called because i love those books and there's like the final one i think somebody said she might be releasing another book this year i don't know if that's true but anyway i love that series so i'm real excited about all that so yeah so alex went to bed really late last night or he, alex went to bed for the whole night early last night i watched um all these shows oh i know what happened okay so i made this video the video ended up being like an hour and five minutes right and then, like, it was uploading and rendering. I think that's when I was watching the end of Big Brother. Either that or I was watching the be the beginning of The Golden Bachelor. And then when it got rendered and I was uploading, it was when I watched it back. Well, when I got done with that, like, when I was watching it, I looked and at the clock and it was, like, 1.45. It was, like... Yeah, it was like 1.45 or something when I finished it. And I looked at my phone and then I was sitting here and, um... I sat out here for a little bit. I feel like I talked to somebody on the phone. I can't remember. I feel like it was somebody I hadn't talked to in a long time. Like, anyway, I was like, who was it? Oh, I listened to some music last night too. I listened to a couple different um, versions of both sides now. The, the one from Coda, which is like my favorite right now. And then I listened to Joni Mitchell version, which is live that she did in concert. The last one that's like, you can buy it. It's like beautiful. It's like very like haunting. I listened to that and then I put up the uh, Jody Mitchell quote of the lyrics of both sides now on my Instagram. <clears throat> so I was listening to some music out here and just kind of being still with the world and stuff like that. And you know what I just realized is that I never did my prayers or meditations last night. I just realized that. Gotta make sure I don't forget that tonight. That's so weird. Like I never miss a night. Like that is so weird. Did I, did I do them last night? I just, did I do them real early and I don't remember? Maybe I did. 
can do them and sometimes like an hour later being like, did I do them? I don't remember. Sometimes like I have to like go to the app to see if I did them. And that's so weird. But I literally sit out here and I'm like very centered and peaceful and I do it for like, an, like you know, 10 or 15 minutes, like on my gratitude list and stuff like that. And then it'll be like two hours later, I'm watching a reality show and I'm like, did I do that? Oh, I know why I didn't finish Love After Lockup last night because it was so long. So anyway, um, I went inside and I looked at the kitchen because I was like, oh my God, it's like getting so late. Like I'm not going to be able to watch all these shows and stuff, right? And I went in the kitchen and it was like 111 and I was like, what is going on? No, no, no. I looked at the, so I, it stopped. I looked at the DVR thing under the TV and it said 111 while well, I went in the kitchen and it said like 211 and I was like, what is going on? Like what tricks of the world? Like I had literally did not put two and two together, right? And I was like, is it daylight savings time? <laughs> I was telling her friend that works at Cafe Patashi today, I was telling her, I said, this is when you know you're getting old because I used to go out to the clubs and like I could not wait for the November like uh, daylight savings time change because you knew you had an extra hour in the club. <laughs> Do you guys remember those days? If you live in a place where it's like the time changes, I like lived for that, right? Um, do you know, like, for the most of my time growing up as a kid, like, we didn't have daylight savings time in Indiana. Like, our time, our time always stayed the same. No, true story. Like, I don't, like, it was, I don't know, 10 or 15 years ago that we did start a daylight savings time. But before that, we never did. Like, we just always were the same time. True story. Unless I'm like, am I remembering that wrong? But I almost am positive I'm not. So anyway... Is that called something else? Is that called central time? Or I don't know. Like, I don't know about the times, okay? I'm with the times, but I don't know about the times. So anyway, so literally I'm like looking back and forth between the microwave and I'm looking at the uh, under the DVR that says like two different times, like one's 111, one's 211. I'm like, I literally felt like I was in the middle of a horror movie and like this was like, you know, <clears throat> Nightmare on Elm Street and something was going wrong. I was like, what is going on? Oh, it's daylight savings time. And then I came out here and I like Googled daylight savings time 2023 and it said Sunday, uh, November 5th. And I was like, okay, so it's today's daylight savings time, Peter. <laughs> Catch up, right? But then I was like, oh my God, this is like me back in the day. Like, yes, we get to go out. We get to stay out to the club more late, right? Dancing, 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 dancing. But the last night, this is when you know you're getting older. I was like, oh my God, I've got so much more time to watch my show. <laughs> so anyway... Now, I will say this, the more consistently I have been taking my trazodone, I mean, it's been like a month now that I've been taking it. I take it, I will say this, like my doctor said, like in a half an hour, you'll like fall asleep. That doesn't happen to me. What I have found is if I take it, like I take it at the beginning of a show now, I used to like take it and expect that like 20 to 30 minutes, I'd be like super tired. What I've noticed is I'll make a cup of sleepy time tea. I now take my trazodone inside. I usually would wait and take it about 15 to 20 minutes be with my sleepy time tea before I went to bed. What I've been doing the last couple weeks is that, and there was a time that I stopped it because I didn't feel like it was working, but I've been taking it consistently. I now take it inside while I'm making my sleepy time tea. I bring my sleepy time tea out here and I start watching my last show. I feel like I was watching something last night that was like 43 minutes. Oh no, I started watching Love After Lockup and I was like, when I start getting tired, because it's an hour and a half, I was like, when I start getting tired, um, I will go to bed. And it, and it was late, but it wasn't super late because of the time change. I think it was like, I went to bed like 4.30 or something like that, which would have been really 5.30, but I knew I didn't have to get up until like 1 or something today, 1.30, because we don't go to brunch till late. So usually on Sundays, we both sleep in. I got up and Alex was still asleep, and then he got on his phone and was looking at TikToks and stuff like that. Little Boo Rad, like, or was he up when I got up? No, I don't remember. Alex loves, loves, Alex, Boo Radley loves, loves, loves his Costco blanket. You guys, I mean, it is so cute. Like, every time I come into the bedroom, he's, like, curled into this little blanket. He loves it so much. And the other day, like, I was, like, leaning on it, and I was, like, half asleep, and he started, like, pulling on it with his paw. It was so cute. Like, he was like, this is my blanket, Dad. Like, I want my blanket. It's so sweet. So I think I'm going to get another one for downstairs so we can have it, like, on the couch or something. So if Caroline and I go to Costco this week, I'm going to get another one because it's just really sweet. I love it. It's like such a soft, uh, cozy blanket. It just makes me so happy that he loves it. So anyway, so um, yeah, so the trousers I feel like is working better. Like I was thinking this morning when I got up, I don't really remember when I fell asleep last night. Um, like I, I lay down, I was like kind of whispering to Boo. I turned over a couple times and then I must have fallen asleep because I don't really remember it. Um, I also did not take a nap, so I don't know. 
but I can take a nap and still fall asleep sometimes, so it doesn't make any sense. The one thing I will tell you is, oh, this is the other thing I have to tell you guys, real quick. When I, this is how bad the allergies are, you guys, okay, because I this never happens to me. We were at brunch today, and um, Alex looked at me and he goes, you've got something in your nose. He like looked close to me, it was his nose, and I go, what is it? And um, he was like, and, and don't even joke, joke in the comment section below and be like, okay, this is the stuff that really pisses me off and I know that there will be people out there that will be like, Peter's doing cocaine. I don't think that's funny as a, as a, as a recovering cocaine addict to joke about that stuff. I'm just making that very clear, okay? So, I don't think that's cute. So, I had a bloody nose today. I haven't had a bloody nose in I don't even know how long, 10, 20 years, something like that. So, Alex is looking at me and I'm sitting at the table and I felt completely fine, right? Like I didn't even notice it. And he goes, you have something in your nose. And I go, what is it? And he goes, it looks like you had a, like a bloody nose and then it like, it, like clotted it up. He goes, go in the bathroom and look at it. He's like, you need to clean that up. And so I went in the bathroom and it did. Like the in, There was no blood on my pillowcase. There was no blood anywhere. The entire side of my nostril was like hardened blood. So I don't know if it like just stopped or what happened. But I start cleaning it with a wet paper towel, and then my, it's almost kind of like I had a cut in my nose, but I don't think it was because it started bleeding again. And it felt like it was coming from like inside my nostril. And so I literally stood in the bathroom for probably five or 10 minutes, and I finally just like blew my nose until it was like clear, and then it stopped. And then I went out there and I had the wet paper towel, and like I was asking, because it was like, this was the weirdest thing. This is kind of like, I don't know why this freaked me out. But it was getting into my beard, and then my beard was like turning red. And I was like, I don't know why it freaked me out. So anyway, because my beard is white, you know? Um, and so I said to Alex, I said, um, if my nose starts bleeding again, tell me. He goes, what do you think it is from the allergies or something? I go, my allergies have been so bad. Like, I thought the freeze would help it, but... Um, my throat's been itching like crazy. My nose has been running. My eyes have been itching. My eyes has been running. Uh, running. I just had to buy on Amazon, which if you're going to buy and buy it on Amazon, other than like at the store, because they're so much cheaper on Amazon. But, um, I mean, I'd always use like the contact drop, contact drops, but my sponsor got me started on, I can't remember, the, it's just like Bausch & Lomb or something, I think, but the re-wetting drops for contacts, and they are like miracle workers. Like they save my eyes, and I just bought four new boxes of them. I think like one tube of them. I always have one in my bag. I always have one in the bathroom, and now I'm going to keep one in the kitchen for when I'm making videos and stuff because my eyes have been itching so bad and been so dry from the allergies. But um, when I... Um, when I use them, they help so much. But I think I can make a bottle last. The bottles are really small. They're like that big. I think I can make a bottle last about two months or something like that. I mean, you don't have to use a lot of them, right? It's just like an eye drop in each one. So, but I just bought four, um, four bottles of them on Amazon. I buy everything on Amazon. So anyway... That almost went down the wrong way, that coffee. This coffee is delicious. Delicious, mama. Uh, <laughs> so, oh, Big Brother tonight. Let me tell you what I want to happen on Big Brother. Because I was going to make a reality TV show video today, but it's getting too late now. It's so it's so dark. Like, look how dark it is all of a sudden. See, it was good good thing. I, see, I thought we were going to vlog for 20 minutes, and now I've been vlogging for like 38 minutes. Just, just right at... Um, and it's only 6.15. <laughs> so, I think when I get done with this, while this is rendering, I'm going to start listening to the Bored to Death Cozy Mystery. I, like, stopped last night listening to the Saturday Night Ghost Club or whatever. I, like, archived it, and then I've never done that with a book before, so I didn't know what I did. Then I had to take it out of the archive, and I don't know where I'm going to be able to find it now. And, but I found it in my library, but I was like, I'm going to forget that it's that I started it because I like only listened to 11 minutes of it and so then I started listening to War to Death. I have, I have like 466 titles I've never listened to on my book before. On my Audible before. 466. That's a lot of money. So, um, or maybe it's 466 total and 200 and something that I haven't listened to. No, it can't be that. Should we see how many it is? I have no long I have no idea how long I've had Audible either. So that's the other thing. Like, um well I had it before 2014. So probably ten years I've had it. I have three credits right now. Okay. Um So yeah, I'm currently listening to Bored to Death by CJ Connor. 
not started yet. 369 titles. Okay, so a, 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 a credit is like eleven ninety nine. So let's just say twelve dollars. So three hundred sixty nine. Did I say three sixty nine? Three sixty nine. Times twelve. That's four thousand four hundred and twenty eight dollars. You guys, I have an unspent books that I haven't read. I need to start reading these books. <laughs> well, that's not true because I, I've gotten free books. Um, I've gotten the two for one credits, but it's still like that's still a lot of money. People have given me books before, um, or given me their credits. Well, they can't give me their credits, but I'll, they'll ask me what. That's only happened one time with one person, but. People want to get rid of their credits, but so they'll ask me what books I want, um, which is so sweet. One person's done that, I guess. Well, a couple people have asked me, but um, oh, I still have to read. I thought I had read that, the Mother Daughter Murder Night. That was my October. That, that'll be the next book that I read, and then I'll get into the cozy mysteries. I already have a bunch of Christmas. How many books have I? How many all titles? Eight. 822 titles, you guys, that I have on here. 822 times 12. That's $9,864. Which, with the free ones that I've gotten and things like that, let's minus that by 2000 Which is, I mean, really, like, that's I, it's probably more like 500 I mean, seven dollars $8,000 I spent on Audible, you guys. Oh, my God. Don't ever tell me again that Audible is not reading a fucking book. Oh, excuse my language. I said, I just said today I wasn't gonna cuss no more on my channel. Or was I didn't say I was gonna cuss. Because I was gonna cuss less. There was my one cuss for this channel today. Um, Twenty five cents for the cuss jar. <laughs> um, that is still a lot of money. But don't anybody ever tell me again that listening to an audiobook is not reading. Okay, I think I've spent enough money on Audible that I can say it's whatever I want to say it is. <laughs> if I want to say it's reading, I can say it's reading. Okay. <laughs> It's so funny because I like get real heated about that. And I think people think I really care, but in all honesty, I don't really care if people think. think I, I read for fun. Like I don't really think it's not that serious to me. In all honesty. <laughs> so anyway, so yeah. So then, um, got up today. Oh, this is the thing I was gonna say about the trazodone. Like a lot of people say, like it makes them feel hungover. Um, I don't feel that way. In all honesty, I can tell you, like sometimes when I feel sick, I'll wake up and I'll be like, man, like this is so weird, like. When was the last time it happened? It was like less than a month ago that it happened. If I don't sleep well or something like that, like I'll wake up and I'll be like, man, I feel hungover. Like, and it'll be from nothing. It won't be from drinking caffeine or staying up too late. Or cause obviously, <laughs> that's not a problem for me, right? But I'll just feel completely off, like how I felt back, like queasy and my stomach will hurt and I just feel off. And it's so weird. And I'll be like, man, I haven't had a drink in almost 29 years and like I'm still feeling like hungover from time to time. Like there's a problem with that, right? The trazodone doesn't make me feel hungover. Like I've heard a lot of people say that. What the trazodone does when I wake up is it, I feel like I'm coming out of a really deep sleep at first. Like it takes me a while to kind of like wake up and like come out of it, you know? Um, so yeah, so it takes me kind of like a time, like some time to like really, really get out of it. Um, that's the only thing I notice. Not a long time, not like two hours, but like a half an hour. Whereas before I was like up. Now it's like if I take the trazodone, like I notice, depending on how much I sleep. Like if I sleep like four hours, it doesn't really happen that much, or six hours. But like last night, I could like I got like a good like eight plus hours. And so when I woke up, I just was like I slept deep. That's the other thing is like. I woke up like once to go to the bathroom, but I was like kind of like stumbling to the bathroom and then stumble back to the bed. When I when that when I sleep all the way through or just get up once to go to the bathroom, like I'm like so like deep dead asleep, deep deep sleep that when I wake up, I just feel like I'm coming out of like a fog kind of thing. But other than that, um, I feel rested. Um, and I do feel like it's starting to help me go to sleep more regularly. So that's good. Um, okay, so that was what I, so we got up and we went to brunch and then we got Diet Cokes. Have I told about everything in the last 24 hours that nobody would care about? <laughs> You're like, yes, Peter. You know what? Let's read some comments. I haven't um, read comments over here. And then I can call this video addressing my vlog or addressing my comments. Let's go over here and read some of these comments. Oh my God, my vlog from yesterday? Has 4.7 thousand views, why? Because I call it, this is way too much, probably. 
Let's see what people say. Lisa said, don't go change in to try and please me. I love you just the way you are by Billy Joel. I need to clean my glasses real quick. Hold on a second. Ah. Well, thank you, Lisa. Lisa, Lisa. For years, there was this movie. I don't know if you guys remember it. I think Cheryl Teagues was in it or something. And it was... It was these girls. It was her daughters. She and her daughter were like teenage daughter were like best friends, and her daughter was friends with the girl that was the best friend in Teen Witch. Do you guys remember this movie? And they would call people up on the phone and they would say, "I saw what you did. I know who you are." It's like a made-for-TV movie, and um, this was when I was back in my eBay era, 20 years ago, buying Christmas movies that have been like on Lifetime one time and stuff like that. No true story. I would fall in love with these like made-for-TV movies. Um, I would, actually, we were talking about this today because it's Carla, that Carla Gugliani or whatever is in that new, like, um, what's it called on Netflix, that new, um, Fall of the House of Usher, and she's been in all of those shows, like, um, Haunting of Hill House and all that stuff, and she's, like, becoming, like, this really well-known, like, um, ensemble actress, and she was in the Spy Games Kid and stuff. Well, what I know her for originally was... Her sister was Laura Dern, and she was the main character in the movie Season of Miracles, which was a Hallmark Christmas movie. It's still one of my favorite Christmas movies to this day. It had Patty Duke Aston. She played a, an angel on it. Do you remember that? Oh, my God, I love that. And I was telling our server that today because she was saying that she had seen that show. And so, um, so yeah, I um, – and Alex and I started that show. It's not bad. I don't know if we're going to continue it, but it's not bad. Um, I don't know what I think about it yet. So anyway, I, um, what was I, what was I talking about her though? Or made for TV shows. Okay, so back in the day, there was another one, there was an Angela Lansbury one that was a Christmas movie. I have the DVD literally in my basement because I bought it. It was like Once Upon a Time or Once Upon a Christmas or something like that. I've got to look this up. Hold on a second. Angela Lansbury. I loved her, didn't she love her murder she wrote? My mom and I used to watch those all the time. I think they were on Sundays. They were such a good Sunday show or weekend show or whenever they were. And that music, I loved that theme song. I might have to download the theme song to murder she wrote. A Lane Spirit. Oh, cause of death. I don't even know what she died of. Natural causes. Mmm, so sad. How old was she when she died? She just died not too long ago, didn't she? Yep. October 11th, 2022, at the age of 96. I loved her so much. I love that show. Okay. Angela Lansbury. Why won't it let me stop? Oh, hold on. I don't want to type out her whole name again. <laughs> this is the one. I can't remember what the other woman's name is. She's a real famous actress, too. Was it Patty Duke? Was Patty Duke in that movie, too? <clears throat> that would be so funny. And she was her daughter and her husband and her had married, and then they ran the family business that Angela Lansbury's husband and her had started, and then he ran it into the ground. And her mother had died, and she came back to visit her and tell her to save the family business. Christmas movie. Here it is, Christmas movies. Here it is, here it is. It's called The Gift of Love, A Christmas Story. True story, here it is right here, The Gift of Love. And more. Let's see who's in it. Who's the daughter played by? Janet Broderick. Oh, Lee Remick. That's who it was. Is crushed by a double blow just before Christmas when she suddenly loses her mother, Amanda Langela Lansbury. Amanda, Amanda Langela, Angela Lansbury. And is forced to uh, bankrupt her small business. Stricken with grief, Janet takes to her bed only to awaken in a mysterious dream world where she finds herself and her children magically reunited with her deceased parents. The group travels back in time to the small Connecticut town where Janet grew up in the hope of spending one last Christmas together. Really to save their business is really what it's about, if you want to know the truth, because I watched that movie and I loved it. But anyway, I used to love those um, Christmas movies and all. I would watch all these, like, made, like my first name is Steven, but I don't think I ever bought that one. But anyway, um, which ended up having that documentary and the brother ended up being a serial killer after Steven died. That whole thing was so weird when I watched that doc the true crime documentary. So anyway, there's also a couple new true crime documentaries. Has anybody watched them? I heard some of them were good. They're on, like, different channels and stuff. If you're watching new true crime documentaries, let me know because I'm in for a good one. But anyway, um... 
So for years, you guys, I would look up because I swear that I thought for I, I swear I swore that the show was called. I saw what you did and I know who you are. Well, there actually is a movie called I saw what you did and I know who you are and it's something like the 40s or something like that. And they would always pull that movie up and I'm like, this must have been a remake that they did of this movie because it was these girls, these teenage girls and they would like prank call these guys that they would find and then they would like follow them and take pictures and then they would have like the friend of the BMV, somebody that they would like act like they knew that would like look up their license plate so they could find out all their information about them. And then they, it was so, the whole movie was kind of weird, honestly. But like, I loved it back in the day because I, you know, the idea of prank calling somebody and all this kind of stuff. Was well, one guy is like a killer and he finds out who they are and he comes for them, right? And then Cheryl Teague freaks out because, was it Cheryl Teague? Anyway, the movie is actually not called I Saw What You Did, I Know Who You Are. It's, also, it's actually, the, the girl that was the main star in it, she ended up being in some TV show. I can't think of her name. Something Keaton, Stacey Keaton or something like that. The movie's actually called Lisa because the girl's name is Lisa. I could not find that movie forever on the eBay. I almost said that. See, on the eBay because I thought it was called. I saw. I know it. I think I watched it when I was in high school with my friends, and we just like loved that movie so much. Um, I think we may have called a few people up and said, "I saw what you did, and I know who you are." Can you imagine if you got that phone call tonight? Wouldn't that be so freaky? If somebody called you and said, "I saw what you did, and I know who you are." Oh my lord! It sounds like a Lois Duncan. Is my nose bleeding again? It sounds like a Lois Duncan movie. Like I know what you did last summer. Lisa movie. Oh, here it is. 1990. It was my senior year in high school. Okay. Here's a screenshot for it. It's this girl. Oh, now it's showing that thing on Amazon. Hold on a second. Here it is. The poster. Okay, and she's on the phone laying in her bed talking to people and telling them she knows what they did. Lisa is a 1990 American thriller film directed by Gary Sherman and starry. Oh, Stacey Keenan. I was close. D.W. Moffat. Was that the girl that was in Teenage... Cheryl Ladd, not Cheryl Teagues, and Jeffrey Tambor. Its plot follows a teenage girl's infatuation with a stranger that unknown to her is a serial killer stalker. It was so good, you guys. Okay, is this um, D.W. Moffat girl? Maybe she was in... No, that's not who... That was the serial killer guy. Who was the girl that played her best friend? Cast. Tanya Finmore. Okay, she was either in this movie that was with Kelly Martin, which was another made-for-TV movie called Her Last Chance, which was about a girl that got sober. I love that movie. She was either the friend in that movie or she was in Can't Buy Me Love, and she played that one girl's best friend. She had the long, dark, curly hair, or she was in Teen Witch. Let's look her up. Tanya Finmore. This is like a little game I like to play. You guys think I sit here and just stir up causing drama all the time but this is actually what I spend my time doing okay Tanya Fenmore oh here she is true story there she is in the movie Lisa with that girl um she got a Wikipedia oh she's got an Instagram what does she look like today let's see her oh she got 514 followers girl oh she got a YouTube channel she's a singer songwriter she got funny dog pictures what's going on I'm confused okay here she is, stream my new album, The Other Side. How? She looks like she's about 19 there. Oh, she's got music videos that she's doing and stuff? Check out my new music video. Lord, and it says, I can't even read it, you guys. That's, oh, she's dressed up like Snow White, and she's got, when did this come out? 2016? Well, she really didn't take off, did she? Now she's posting pictures of crazy dogs and stuff like that. Girl! What happened to you? Okay, so anyway, does she got a Wikipedia? Let's see. About Tanya Fenmore. She magna cum laude, Pi Beta Kappa from Harvard University and an MBA from the Harvard Business School. This cannot be the same Tanya Fenmore. Is this the same Tanya Fenmore? Is she really that smart? Was she in Teen Witch though? That's all I care about. Okay. Okay, here it is. I'm going to have to turn it sideways because she's got such a long bio. Okay. Tanya Finmore grew up in Los Angeles performing and playing classical violin. Oh, I did not know that. <laughs> this is like, you guys want to truly know. Like, y'all think I'm sitting online, like, looking up Jaclyn Hill's tweets and stuff like that. That takes me about five minutes of my day. This is the kind of stuff that I get eaten alive with, okay? Some co-star in a movie that came out in 1990 that was made for TV. <laughs> like, that's the kind of stuff that I get eaten alive with, right? Okay. Tanya Finmore grew up in Los Angeles performing and playing classical violin. As a child, her movie break was top was tap dancing and fiddling in Steve Martin's film Pennies from Heaven. 
That was not a very good movie. Followed by Steven Spielberg's segment of Twilight Zone, the movie, and MGM's Lisa. Then more guest starred in various TV series, including Family Ties, Fame, Mama's Family, My Two Dads, The Tracy Ullman Show. This is taking me back to my childhood. Who's the boss? Tales from the Dark Side and ABC's Life Goes On. I love that show so much. Um, Life Goes On opposite Patti LuPone. While... Um, I mean, I like Patti LuPone, but that show is so much more than just Patti LuPone. While an undergraduate at Harvard, she sang in Harvard's professional a cappella group, and more later directed short films in Italy. I th why did I think she was in something more than just that Lisa that I would know of? Not Pennies in Heaven. Now that show, that movie was stupid. Anyway, uh, Finn Moore later directed, I don't even think I finished that movie, Pennies in Heaven. Did that have that one girl in it that was in Little Darlings? Do you remember that Little Darlings movie? With My cousin Caroline loved that movie when it came out. Dirty Minded. That was with uh, Tatum O'Neill. That's who I'm talking about. Was that Pennies from Heaven with Tatum O'Neill or was that the original Pennies from Heaven? It was Tatum O'Neill and Christy. Whatever happened to that Christy girl? Do you guys know what I'm talking about? We'll have to look her up next. Okay. Um, starring, oh wait, okay. While an undergraduate at Harvard, she sang in Harvard's professional a cappella group. Where am I at on time? Okay. Then more later directed short films in Italy and the U.S., that played at various festivals and wrote, directed, and produced a feature film, Graduation Week, Lifetime Channel. Uh, First Look Media, starring Alana Eubach, Meet the Fockers. Finmore screenplay, Little Lady Fauntleroy, inspired by Francis Burnett's classic novel, Little Lord Fauntleroy was the novel, was produced um, by German broadcaster ZDF and Yellow Bird Pictures, A Girl with a Dragon Tattoo Trilogy. Okay, she didn't do that, but he, he, did, he did. Um... A chance meeting during a trip to Mumbai, India, led Tanya back to her musical roots where she co-wrote and recorded the English version of the theme song for the feature film, 1971. I never even heard of that movie. She then wrote the theme song, Was She?, for the independent feature film, The Guest House. I've never heard of any of these movies. <laughs> this is like reading a bio of the most boring person in the entire world. I mean, congratulations on going to Harvard. But you didn't even say much about that in here. Finmore wrote and pro produced her debut album, The Other Side, and directed and produced her music videos for the title track in Coming China at the Kingdom of Dwarfs Amusement Park. That's the seven, the Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs situation. Um, Tanya holds a BA, magnum cum laude, pi, uh, pi Beta Kappa, Phi Beta Kappa, from Harvard University and an MBA from the Harvard Business School. I mean, that's a pretty big deal. She speaks decent Spanish. Well, so do I. <laughs> what does that mean? <laughs> you know enough to get by? Okay. Uh, better Italian and currently resides in Los Angeles with her multi-talented toy poodle, Gigi. Oh, that must be the pictures that she's posting all over the place. I would have sworn this girl was in Teen Witch or one of the movies. I want to see her Wikipedia. Oh, wait, her video. No, that's not what I wanted to see. I'm going to put Tanya Fenmore movies in here. Like, I did not until tonight and even know who uh, Tanya Fenmore was. Lisa. Why is it? It pulled up three movies. Twilight Zone. The step My stepmother is an alien. I guess those were the only three movies she was in. I swear to God she was in this movie called Her Last Chance. I'm gonna, or was she in Camp, they would say if she was in Camp Buy Me Love, wouldn't they? Tanya Fenmore, she looks just like that girl that was in Camp Buy Me Love. Can't buy me love. The pen was discovered by Amanda. Disco Pictures of Tanya Fenmore can't buy me love. See, she was in that movie. Pictures of Tanya Fenmore. Oh, it says right here. She's known for twice. Uh, Tina Casper in Can't Buy Me Love. I knew it, girl. You cannot get my. You listen. You cannot get by me on the Tanya Fenmores. I know the Tanya Fenmores of the world. <laughs> I know a good Tanya. Okay, but anyway, who else was I going to look up now? I don't even remember. Cheryl Ladd. Stacey Keaton, Keechin, Ke Keenan, I don't even know. What was I going to look at? Well, put it in the comment section. Let me know. I was going to read some comments is what I was going to do, but I was like getting into it. Um, Joe said, I listened while I made dinner. Thank you for the company, Peter. Oh, you're welcome. Thank you so much. 
Um, where am I at on time? You know, this is gonna stop in a minute and the battery is about halfway there, so let me stop this and go get the other battery, hold on. Okay, I'm back. See, I said this was gonna be a really short vlog. <laughs> And we're like at it, like right now we're at like at 50 miles. Oh, you know what? I shut, th I shut the door. <laughs> I was like, why is it so dark? Hold on just a second. This front porch, all these leaves from Fernalicious. This front porch smells so good, you guys. It smells just like this Honeycrisp apple candle. It smells so good. But um, I went inside when I came out, my eyes started itching like crazy. I was like, I should grab those eye drops that I just got in the mail. Who was I gonna look up? Now I don't remember. Tanya Finmore, Can't Buy Me Love, Kelly Martin. I was gonna look up the cast of Kelly Martin, Her Last Chance or something like that. That was such a good movie. Can you still watch that movie today? I was about this girl that gets sober. Watch, I'll tell you two good movies that I watched back in the day. Watch her, it's probably on Tubi, Last Chance. Cause they have a lot of like made for TV movies. I think it was on MTV or Lifetime or something. Oh, you can watch the whole thing on the YouTubes. Her Last Chance full movie. Well, all right. And the other one is called Wasted and it was from MTV and it was about a heroin addiction um, in like Waco, Texas and it was based on a true story. Um, Watch MTV Wasted. Oh, yeah, here it is. It literally proves the point of jails, institutions, and death. It's a, you can watch it on Amazon. Oh, Amazon, you have to rent it. Apple TV for three ninety nine or Amazon for three ninety nine. Well, if you're not, if you're not, it says the whole movie is on YouTube. That can't be. It is the whole movie. It's not a great version of it, but you could watch it. That's such a great movie. It has that guy. Do you remember that TV show, Carnival? He's actually, I love that TV. Did you ever watch that TV show back in the day? I think it was on HBO, Carnival. My ex and I used to watch that show. I love that show. Um, Carnival, Carnival, I think it was called. Carnival, HBO. I wish that show had never been cast canceled. I thought that show was so good. Nick Stahl, that's who it was. Okay, so this Nick Stahl guy, who I think is real good looking, do you guys remember him? <laughs> I know, if I put it in front of my face or I turn down the light, but it's this guy right here, Nick Stahl. Do you guys remember him? Okay, how old is he? He's gotta be probably, oh, he's 43, so he's not too, he's like close to my age. But do you guys remember him? Okay, I feel like he might be sober because he, why did Nick Stahl stop acting? Is Nick Stahl in Fear of the Walking Dead? Who is he in Nick, Fear of the Walking Dead? Why can't I remember him in that show? I need to finish that show too. But anyway, um, I feel like he might have gotten sober because he was in a lot of these movies that had to do with sobriety. Oh, wait. On June 28th, 2013, that would have been way after that movie was made, Nick Stahl was arrested in Hollywood for alleged possession of methamphetamine. In a 2017 interview at the Dallas comic show, Stahl stated he had moved to Texas and was taking a leave of absence from acting to concentrate on his family and sobriety. Well, that's interesting because, so the movie Wasted, though, came out long before that. Like, probably close to when I graduated from high school. Well, no, because he would have been, like, 10 years younger than me. So maybe when I was, like, 25. Wasted HBO movie year. Two thousand and two. Texas small town high school buddies Chris Owen Turner and Samantha Sam Campbell were inconspicuous, bored, and feeling biased about anti-drug stuff. It's such a good movie, you guys. Here's the poster for it. We used to show that in treatment, too. 
And we used to, the movies that we used to show in treatment were Drugstore Cowboy. If you've never seen that movie, that movie is really good. It shows really about the, the whole idea of craving and addiction. And we used to watch When a Man Loves a Woman. And we used to watch um, When a Man Loves a Woman, Drugstore Cowboy. Wasted her last chance. Her last chance is great because it's at the end of it, Kelly Martin ends up going to work in a treatment facility. And the way that her sponsor talks to her in the movie is kind of how she talks to people at the end of the movie. It's real cute. And then we watched what was the one about the poet, Jim? Leonardo DiCaprio played it. That movie is so hard. I'll never forget watching the scene where he's banging on his mom's drawer or door, begging her for money, and she won't answer the door. That is like literally the epitome of addiction. Um has poet in the name of it. Jim Carroll. What was the name of that movie? Leonardo DiCaprio, Jim Carroll. That movie is such a fantastic movie about addiction. Um, Leonardo. Leo, I'm just going to put Leo. Leo DiCaprio. I must put DiCaprio. He's not my favorite actor in the entire world, just so you know. DiCaprio. Is it Jim Carroll? Is that his name? Why do I? Jim Carroll. I feel like that was his name. Basketball Diaries. Yeah, that was fantastic. Basketball Diaries film. 1999-95. That was came out the year after I got sober. Oh, Clean and Sober. We used to watch a lot in treatment, too. Directed by Scott Calvert. Um, and his feature directional, directorial debut. And based on an autobiographical novel by the same name written by Jim Carroll, it tells the story of Carroll's teenage years as a promising high school basketball player and writer who develops an addiction to heroin. Distributed by New Lane, Line Cinema, The Basketball Diaries stars Leonardo DiCaprio as Carroll, along with Bruno Kirby, Lorraine Bracca, who played his mom, Ernie Hudson, Patrick McCall. It was really good. And Mark Wahlberg. Oh, I forgot he was in that, too. Um... Do you know what other movie I loved back in the day? Do you guys remember the movie Hoop Dreams? Did you ever see that documentary? Hoop, what year did that come out? I loved, loved... I always forget about that documentary. I should watch it again. It was such a powerful documentary. Filmed over a five-year period. Hoop Dreams by Steve... What year did it come out? It didn't come out in 2020. Is Hoop Dreams based on a true story? Duh, it was a documentary. Adapted from the award-winning film, the true story of two boys from inner city Chicago with a gift for basketball follows their struggle to turn high school stardom into college scholarships and pro careers and to escape. Um, okay, where is it at? Like, a hoop dreams. Here it is. Um, let's see the plot down here on the Wikipedia. Synopsis. In 19... What year did it come out? Release date, 1994, October 14th. Oh, it came out before I got sober. I, it was 171 minutes. I was going to say, I remember it being really long. The budget was 700000 They made $11.8 I feel like it won awards and stuff. Didn't it win an award that year? Let's see. A, Academy Awards controversy. It was not nominated, and there was public outcry about it. Okay, let's see the synopsis. It's like a long synopsis, though. Um, 1987, William Gates and Arthur A.G. Two uh, African American teenagers are recruited by a scout from St. High St. Joseph High School in Winchester, Illinois. I, I feel like it's, if I remember it correctly, it's about two two guys, and they're both really talented in basketball, and they go down different, completely different roads, and it kind of shows like what can happen. Um, both boys face 90-minute com commutes to the school each way. In their freshman year, Gates starts on the varsity team at St. Joseph and helps them win the sectional title, earning a mention from the sportsman. Okay. Uh, meanwhile, uh, A.G. is his name, plays on the freshman team and struggles both on the court and in the classroom. At the end of the year, A.G. is kicked out of St. Joseph and his family is unable to pay his tuition. Gates' fees are covered by his sponsor, the president of Encyclopedia Peter Britannica, who also helps him to find a white-collar summer job. A.G.'s rejection from St. Joseph damages his self-confidence and he plays poorly for his public school team. It goes on to show, like, them both getting involved um, before the senior year, where Dick Vitale and Spike Lee make appearances after returning from camp. It shows, like, how, like, drugs and gang stuff and all this kind of, and, like, being kicked out of the right schools and all this kind of stuff, like, really play into, like, both of the roads. And really this idea of it takes a village to raise a child, that, like, we're all responsible for the kids out there and, like, where they're going and what they're doing with their lives and stuff like that. It's a really powerful movie. If you've never seen it, I'm sure you can probably watch it on some platform out there. It is really, really powerful. I feel like I watched it with my mom. 
but that would have had to have been way after I got sober because I wasn't watching movies with my mom my first six months. Watch. Hoop Dreams. Watch. It says you can watch it on YouTube. Oh, it's on Tubi for free. Peacock. Oh, Amazon Prime Video for free. It's on a lot of Macs for free. It's on all kinds of different things. You can run it on Apple TV for $3.99. I'm going to have to watch that again. I am going to watch that again. Hoop Dreams. I'm screenshotting it right now on Amazon just so I remember. Such a fantastic movie. I've been so inspired by so many documentaries. There's so many documentaries I love. I love the Grey Gardens documentary. I love, oh my God, the wonderful, the wild and wonderful whites of West Virginia. I love that so much. There's so many documentaries I like. Okay, let's read some comments. Um, Peter, can you please eat with us? I would love for you to have a meal and just chat with us. It would be like eating with a friend. I know I would love it, and I'm sure other subs would as well. Yeah, absolutely. Like, I can do that sometime on this channel. Here's the thing that when I get done, like, one of my things that I really enjoy is to sit down with Alex and eat or sit down and watch a show and eat. Um, and so I kind of, like, wait till I've got all my videos filmed for the day and do all that kind of stuff before I, like, relax and do that. So if I eat a meal on, like, if Alex goes out one night, that would be a good night for me to do that. I could order some food and then I could do, like, a like a mukbang vlog or whatever and eat with you guys. The other thing, there's a lot of people that don't enjoy me eating on camera. Um, like, you guys remember I used to, like, chew the cough drops and stuff like that and people would kind of lose their minds over it. Well, not lose their minds, but people would be like, oh, my God, that's so annoying that you're chewing on that cough drop. Um, so I, like, to do it through an entire video and eat a meal, I don't know that people would love that. But if people want me to do that, put it in the comment section below and I'll do that. Um, somebody said, oh, and another thing I wanted to mention, okay, they mentioned something down here, what they say? Oh, they, a lot. So you're coming, okay, they said, woohoo, it's Sunday now and I'm still catching up. Finished grocery shopping. This is from Cauliflower. Oh, she's been around forever. Hey, girl. Um, just finished grocery shopping and now doing some prep for the week. Then she said, I'm an only child too, and yeah, I don't get the sibling stuff. I have two kids three years apart. When they were younger, they would be lost when the other left for a play day and I would be like, uh, go play by yourself. And my husband said, you won't understand because you didn't ha always have that play man around. Never had that play man around. N not always. Did Never had one. Had to learn how to play by yourself. It's very lonely to be an only child. Um... So thank you for pointing this out. I still love my alone time. And I love in the evenings my husband goes to his end of the house and does stuff and I go to the end of mine and do stuff. It's great. Oh, God. I've been watching since 2017. You can't get rid of me. Oh, Somebody said, oh, and uh, the cauliflower said, oh, another thing I wanted to mention yesterday, you said getting tired of being around people or getting energy from being around people isn't an introvert, extrovert thing. It is literally one of the things that define, oh, I didn't know that, defines introverts and extroverts. I'm an introvert married to an extrovert, so I get it. Well, thank you for saying that because I did not know that. Um, yeah, so many people said it was Mary Jane's last dance. Last chance, dance with Mary Jane. I actually don't think it's called Mary Jane's Last Dance. It's Tom Petty. Let's see. Is that what it's called? Tom Petty. Last Dance. It's, oh, it is called Mary Jane's Last Dance. Why did I think it was called Last Dance with Mary Jane? Mary Jane's Last Dance. It's such a good video, too. I actually have the circle in uh, downtown Indianapolis in it. So I was wrong. You were right. I hear Alex downstairs. Where's he? Oh, he must be getting cookies out. Um, so this is from Prentice. Prentice. Hold on a second. Uh, da, da, da. Put, turn my volume down the phone. Okay. My husband is in the kitchen. He is cooking up something. What are you cooking up in the kitchen? What are you cooking in there? Because my most viewed vlog is Fox Hollow Farms. Is that not so hilarious? Okay. Um, oh, and my second highest viewed vlog, I thought it was day one that I started the vlog. My second highest viewed vlog is finally what everyone's been asking for, the three hour vlog. Three hours and 12 minutes and 42 seconds. That is so funny that that is my second highest viewed vlog. Is that not so crazy? Oh, now I've got that stupid Tom Petty song in my head. Well, it's not stupid. I love that song, but... Last chance to dance with Mary Jane. One more time to ease the pain. Um. Uh, 
squeaky Halloween door. That's what my mom used to say. Remember that? I wanted to look at this comment on my video, but it's not like, why am I not being able to see it on my video? But it's right here. Four hours ago, this was way too much. Why is this comment not showing up on my video, but it's showing up in the back end? <coughs> Newest? Did I not go back far enough? Oh, here it is. Okay. So Prentice left this comment and said, Peter, please consider this. And there's warning signs and emojis. You really wanted me to read this comment. Okay. A lot of your longtime fans, including myself, have noticed a drastic shift in Peter's attitude. I love and over here you have, or just on my drama channel. Because that's a, I, I need to know that, right? Because I don't feel like I've changed at all on this channel over here. Um, I love and support you, which is why I hope you see this comment. Anytime someone drastically changes negatively, especially the way we've noticed... They should be checked for a brain tumor. This is not a joke. My hairdresser went through the same thing, and we had a massive falling out. I never knew him to be... I, so, okay, uh, with my neurological issues and things like that, I'm checked regularly. Like my blood is test, MRIs, and things like that. So I appreciate this comment. I just, for clarification, I don't have a brain tumor, but I really, really appreciate that. Um, with having neurological issues, like, I have to be checked for that stuff on a pretty regular basis. But no, I really appreciate this comment. <coughs> So they go on to talk about this, but I think the possibility of a brain tumor should be taken seriously. Please don't take this the wrong way. I live by, if you see something, say something, which I love. And I think uh, I may be seeing symptoms of a possible brain tumor here, and I want to get the suggestion to you whether you take it as kindly as I mean or not. I just want it. Um, and, and what I want to say is, like, I really, really appreciate this. Um, as somebody that has suffered a lot of medical issues and talked about them openly on my channel... I just want to say, like, if if there are a lot of YouTubers that I know and I talk to that if they receive this can't, this comment, it would literally put them in the panic mode. That somebody out there that knows about these things has seen symptoms of a brain tumor. That might be something that you want to think about maybe, like, DMing that person or emailing them. That's a pretty uh, significant thing to suggest to somebody. I mean, uh, we have very dear family friends of ours whose son died years ago from a brain tumor. I've known other people that have had brain tumors. Um, it's a pretty serious and fast thing that happens. I don't know if that's just something that you want to leave in a comment as a suggestion. I'm just saying, okay? Um, I don't have an issue with it because um, I'm, like, checked out pretty regularly, so I would know if that were the case. Um, I actually made an entire video today over my drama channel explaining my, um, like, the whole situation, made some apologies, talked about that over there. I appreciate your comment. I appreciate your sentiment. I think because I talk so much about my medical issues, you probably feel comfortable to leave that comment over here. And, and I appreciate it. Like, I really do. Um, I'm just telling you that I know, like, some YouTubers that, that, like, would freak them out if they read that comment. Because they'd be like, oh, my God, do I have a brain tumor? It's a Sunday night. There's nothing I can do about it. Am I dying? Whatever, right? But, no, I appreciate the comment so much. Thank you. Um... One of the things I haven't talked a lot about, and I didn't even address it in the video today because my video that I made over there was about me um, taking just responsibility and I didn't want to put it off and make excuses about it. And actually somebody commented, I don't know if it was on the vlog or if it was on the drama channel, but they said something about their daughter having been on Keppra. So one of the side effects of Keppra is like mood swings. I don't necessarily feel like that is the reason for what's been going on over that channel. I feel like the stress of being stalked and harassed and what's been going on behind the scenes and meaning to stand up for myself and the lies. I explained it all over there today, right? Um, the drastic mood changes and stuff that... Because, like, when I'm not, like, reading the stuff or I'm not engaging in the stuff or I'm not having to deal with, like, a doctor's office calling me or whatever, like, I don't freak out about this stuff. Like, I'm pretty calm. So... I don't feel like it's a organic or a medical, like medicinal issue that's happening to me. I feel like it is me having to w work through this phase of my life, which I explained over on that channel. But that is something that is true with Keppra, that Keppra does have a side effect of like moodiness. Um, I can't say the word on, on YouTube, but like wanting to hurt yourself and things like that. That was one of the concerns that Alex had um, of me being on Keppra. What I will tell you about my experience of being on Keppra compared to Depakote was that 
when I was on, Alex just walked into the bathroom and closed the door. When I was, he like looked out here and then like closed the door. When I, here's my, I got him the Ugg sweatpants, sweatshirt, and robe. And he like every day wears that Ugg robe. He loves it. I got it from Christmas, for Christmas last year. So anyway, um, so if you're looking for a good Christmas present, the Ugg robe, Alex absolutely loves it. It's a big like teddy bear one. So when um, I was on Depakote, I didn't really know, like at the time, like I didn't know that there was any different feeling to it because um, now Boo Radley's like wanting him to come out of the bathroom. He's like, oh, Boo Radley, booby. Oh, now it's, oh, there he is. What are you making? He just flipped me off. He just smiled at me and flipped me off. <laughs> it's called love and marriage. But anyway, when I was on Depakote, first of all, Depakote, one of the things that it does is that it makes you aggressively hungry, okay? It also, like, I was fatigued and tired a lot. Um, and the other thing is, I felt like I was, like, I had a heavy, I would always explain this to doctors. Like, I felt like I had, like, a heavy comforter over my head and was just walking around with this heavy blanket or comforter over my head all the time, right? When they put me on the Keppra, I all of a sudden felt clear-headed in a way that I had never felt before. Like, I mean, not in my life, but like since my first seizure and 23 years ago when I was put on the medication, um, there's a lot of good medications that have come out since Depakote was around. Um, what is he going into the garage for now? <laughs> He's down here, I thought he was asleep. He was resting in bed, and then he got up and was doing all kinds of stuff. What's he doing in there? He's getting his car. What's he doing? But anyway, there's a lot of really good uh, seizure medications that have come out since. A lot of it has to do with, like, trying different things. Like, they actually started me on one medication, and then the test studies and stuff. And the, the, it's two words. It's, um, well, I could actually just look it up and tell you what it is. It's, like, something, it starts with, like, it's, like, Bear something, barrier or something like that. It's like a guy's name. Epilepsy medicines. Epilepsy. Medicines. Hold on a second. Why can I not just have like a list of what the medications are? Seizure medication list. The reason why, okay, Alex was apprehensive about me being on Capra because Brivacetum? That doesn't feel like it's right. It's something like, it starts with a B though. This is the only one that's coming up. That's not what it is. Is Breviac the same as Keppra? Or anti-convulsive medication. That's not what it is. It's it's a guy's name. It's like two names. I cannot remember for the life of me what it is. I'd have to look on my medical records and see. Um, but anyway, Alex was not sure. Okay, so this is what happened. So they put me on this medication. Well, this medication is new. It just came out in the last couple years or last two years or whatever. There aren't a lot of studies that have done it. The first doctor that came to see me was, um, he put me on that. Alex's concern about that wasn't a, lot, wasn't a lot of studies. The second doctor that saw me, and I agreed. The second doctor that saw me from the same practice, he was concerned um, that, and this is all, they're all, uh, partners in my neurologist practice. The second neurologist that saw me, he was concerned about putting me on it, even though the first guy was starting me on it, I think had started me on it, because there, uh, because there weren't a lot of clinical trials that had been done on it, they didn't know a lot about it. So he said a similar drug was Keppra, and that there were, like, you didn't have to do blood tests for Keppra, because like Depakote, I had to have blood tests regularly for my levels and things like that, and it was like a really safe drug, and then a lot of people were taking Keppra and they were seizure free for years and years and years and whatever. And he said that most of his client or patients felt really normal on Keppra. He said the only side effect what or the, the the only issue was that some of the side effects were things like wanting to hurt yourself, extreme mood changes, things like that. I 
Like, I even asked Alex in going through this, I said, do you feel like my mood has really been affected by the Kepra? And he was like, not at all. He was like, no. He was like, like I feel like you like kind of go up and down sometimes. He goes, but I don't feel like it's because of the drug. He goes, I don't feel like what he explained to us that it would look like is because of that, but I could be wrong, right? So, um, yeah, I don't think that's necessarily because of that. But I, I feel the best I've ever felt on Kepra, which is part of why I'm apprehensive to try and get on something else. Like, even when I was talking about the sleep and things like that, it was, like, why I didn't want to stop taking it. Because I was like, okay, well, I, maybe I won't sleep, but then I'll try something else and I won't like it as well as the Kepra. I mean, I feel like the most normal I've ever felt my entire life. Um, and I always felt pretty normal in the Depakote. I just felt like I always kind of had, like, this... I mean, I had good days, but I, most days I felt like, I, I never felt like, you know, anyway, I just, I feel so much more clear-headed on the Capra, is what I want to say, so, um, and obviously I cannot be on the Depakote anymore because of the pancreatitis. So, all right, let's read some more comments. But by the way, I made a whole entire video about that, so, uh, Prentice, I really say, I want to say I appreciate your comment. Um... Since you said that you hope that I don't take that as his criticism, I hope that you don't hear what I say as taking criticism. I can totally handle it, and I appreciate you bringing it to my attention. Um, but what I want to say, and you're not the only person that, like, I've had other people message that to me. I just want to say, and being careful with other people out there, because there are some people that I think, like, you know, I don't know how they would handle that. Um, somebody said, my 10-year-old is so... So many people knew what this thing was, is Beyblades that Sebastian wants. They fit in your hands, and they are, like... Battling spin tops. I guess it's like this thing that kids are really into right now. So many people commented on it. Um, Mama said, I miss your intros and lighthearted comedy on the drama channel. I think adding that back with your standing up era would be fire. Either way, I love you in whatever era you're in. Thank you so much. Um, Lavender Laddie said, Lady said, Peter, you're best ever. Dana said, I watch your drama channel too. Rebecca said, when you were talking about the sprinkle, I kept thinking about David on Schitt's Creek. What the hell is a sprinkle? That's so funny that you said that because I was telling Alex today that nobody knew what a sprinkle was. And he goes, tell him just to watch Schitt's Creek. <laughs> um, okay, Sway said, why is Grandpa LOL? I don't often... I don't comment often, but I have been watching you for a long time. I think you have to be you. The more authentic you are on camera, the happier you will be. People tune in to see your take on things, and it's okay to evolve. To expect anyone to stay the same forever is unrealistic. No matter what age, you should always be evolving. I support you at every stage, and at the end of the day, the channel says Peter Ma, not Susie Q. If they don't like you, they can watch someone else who better aligns with their views. I addressed that in my video today as well, but thank you. Um, oh, I see people talking about the Beyblades. Sarah brought it up to me. Casey brought it up to me. How do you guys know about these? This is like a big kid, kid thing right now. This is like Cabbage Patch Kids when I was growing up. Um, Waiting for Brilliance said, I think to remember standing up for yourself doesn't always have to look like you're on the offense or defense. Standing up for yourself can be standing in your truth or quiet. This is exactly what I talked about in my video today. Thank you so much for this. I think when you find your voice, you want to use it with everything. Sometimes the most important things we express are the things we don't say, but we, what we show, I have learned, and I continue to learn this about myself. Sometimes you don't need to put a... Okay, gotcha. Yeah, I agree with you. Like, that's what I talked about in my video today, but I'm, like, learning that, you know? My video that I did on my drama channel today was very, very important to me. If you don't typically watch my drama channel, I would really ask you to go watch it. I was gonna, I was gonna say beg. I'm not gonna beg you, but I would really ask that you go watch it because um, it really means a lot. First of all, your comments really mean a lot to me. I really, really appreciate it. I'm gonna read the rest of them when I get off here. Um, but I, it, that video meant a lot to me, and I also talk a lot about recovery on that video. So. Okay, I'm going to get off here now. So I'm going to say, I hope that you guys are having a magically amazing Sunday. This is like an hour and a half or something, so I've got to get off here. Or um, I'm never in, and I've got like 50 seconds less than to finish this outro. So before it gets to the 30-minute mark. So I just want to say, I hope you're having a magically amazing Sunday, and that you are getting refreshed, rejuvenated, renewed, and relaxed for the week ahead, and that you have a fantastic, amazing, magically amazing beginning to your week. And, um, and if nobody else has told you this today, I love you. And remember these three very important 
fun things. One, you can start your day over whenever you want or your week if you need to. Two, practice random acts of kindness, but shh, don't tell anyone. And three, most importantly, make sure that you reach out to somebody, let them know how much they mean to you. Like I always say, you might be putting a smile on their face, might be cheering them up, might be make, f making them feel happier, might be making them feel not so all alone. Also, be kinder to one another a little bit more, love one another a little bit more. Most importantly, be kinder and love yourselves a little bit more because it all starts with you. And the more you're kinder to others and the more you love others, the more you will be kinder to yourself and love you. The more you're kinder to yourself and you love others, this is gonna stop, hold on. Damn it, Janet, I wanted to get it in. Okay, um, so let me slow down a little bit. Be kinder to one another, love one another a little bit more, and most importantly, be kinder and love yourselves a little bit more because it all starts with you. And the more that you are kinder to yourself and the more that you love yourself, the more that you will be kinder and love others. The more you'll be kinder to others and the more that you will love others as well. Um, and most importantly, that was most importantly, wasn't it? <laughs> Oh, just have a good week. You know, let's just have a really good week. Let's have a peaceful week. Let's have an introspective week, but let's not get too deep this week. You know, let's just, let's, let's keep it a little surface level. Read a cozy mystery, have a cup of coffee, laugh with our friends, you know, take a nap, have good work days, eat good meals, be grateful for all that's given to us. Let's just have good weeks, right? Let's have a, or let's have a good week. Let's have a good week. Let's have a good years. But let's focus just maybe on this week and have a good week or maybe just tomorrow. Let's have a good day tomorrow and have a good Monday and have a good start to our week and be grateful for the water that we have to drink and the food that we have to eat and a cup of coffee that we have and to laugh with our friend maybe on the phone for five minutes and um, to lay down our head at night and rest in the fact that we were given one more day. And I love you guys so much and I will see you tomorrow. Bye. Love you. Oh, and for those that need to hear it and those that want to hear it, just for anybody out there, one more I love you. I love you guys, and I'll see you tomorrow. Bye. Love you. Happy birthday, Lena.